Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Microsoft Systems PLC Investor Presentation relating to the trading update for H1 2021. Throughout this presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Click on Q&A, type in your question, and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via Investor Meet Company dashboard and you'll be notified once they're ready for your review. I'd also like to remind you that this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Glenn Tracy, CEO and Bevan Metcalf, CFO of Microsoft Systems PLC. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Perfect. Thank you, everybody, for attending this uh, this call. And what we'll do is we'll just get stuck straight into the presentation. Uh, let me take the video off so you get the full screen. Uh, the usual disclaimer, unfortunately. I'm sure you've you've read it thoroughly. Great. Okay. So um, what we want to do is uh, give you an update on H1. Obviously, a fantastic headline figure. 594% uh, up versus the same period uh, last year, uh, but 52% up on the same period 2019, which I think is more of a pre-pandemic benchmark. Uh, so some good good figures, but what does this show? Well, um, number one, the business model has switched from what we were, which was sim simple instrument sales, to frontline screening plus AI artificial intelligence plus internet of things connectivity and really we're all about the data number two commercialization 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 uh, that is absolutely key and we're seeing significant signings of commercial agreements and products out the door number three we've turned the strategy we are focused on solving real world problems in environmental health and in human health and uh, just to give you uh, some some uh, detail on that. We are looking at pollution in our waterways real time. We're bringing new therapies to market faster and cheaper. We're testing those therapies real time in the patient and we're ensuring your food is, is what it says and that it's safe to eat. And those are just a few application areas and we'll come on to those uh, in a little, uh, a little later. We're well funded. Uh, we're funded to deliver multiple X value to our shareholders. We're well resourced and we've got a lot of innovation in all the headline markets and key geographies. And slide two. Uh, so on that note, and I'm, I'm going to give you uh, a, a quick summary on the most recent RNS, which is summarized here. Uh, we're absolutely delighted to say that we've demonstrated a world first method for real time monitoring and control of biologic therapeutics as they're made, such as vaccines and anti cancer treatments. And by integrating our miniaturized but powerful technology through software and analytics into the bioprocessing workflow, we've been shown to number one, speed up the potential uh, of drug development and also reduce the cost of scaling up the production of, uh, of biologics and therapeutics. We're different uh, because of our size and we can monitor multiple elements in a bioreactor in one go. And no one else is doing that and no one else is doing it real time. So really, uh, you know, this is a fantastic move in the industry. The market for current bioprocess uh, instrumentation is around about 390 million pounds. And we intend, intend to take share of that because simply uh, we intend to displace a lot of the incumbent technology uh, because we do it better. Our first installs with end users are going to be happening later this year. And you can see actually some of the brands that we have been collaborating with today to date. So really very exciting uh, uh, um, uh, venture for us. Slide three then, just a reminder of our strategy. Uh, our technology is used in laboratories, it's used in frontline field-based screening and in real-time monitoring. And that's what sets us apart. We've got a, a very, very broad point of use, as I call it. Typically, when you look at others in our industry, they, they generally mainstream in, in one or the other, but we cover all three. We've got very powerful miniaturized technology, and especially when you add in uh, AI um, and uh, to establish the patterns in the data, 
and enable highly informed decisions and then also allow for uh, internet of things connectivity you can start to change the way you transact with the world especially when you have multiplex detectors within a system all that and uh, it also in headline markets in human health environmental health and diversified so as i said earlier on you know we're, we're helping to bring new therapies to market faster and cheaper with our pat technology we're going to be testing those therapies real time in the patient uh, we're looking at pollution screening for pollution in our waterways real time we're ensuring your food is what it says it is and it's safe to drink and really i'll make no secret of the fact that my goal is to add real-time cancer diagnostics to this list and that's something we're actively working on right now very very exciting so um another announcement we made earlier in the year we signed a fantastic commercial agreement and collaboration with deep verge and that's to drive our product through their channel in 60 countries uh, we've already shipped over 100 k's worth of kit and that's going to be used in north america europe and china in particular in water detection we also have collaborations underway with them including their lab skin uh, skin biome project and we are also co-locating resource and personnel the synergies between us are, are extremely clear and uh, this this makes perfect sense to have a united sales and r d front another announcement so yet another announcement in may uh, we announced uh, heads of turns with a chinese partner uh, that chinese partner is going to be revealed shortly when we sign the full agreement which is proceeding really very well um, so in the next few weeks we'll be announcing a lot more detail on that and, and who it is and how we're going to be uh, going to market now um this is really uh, a, a bit like the bioprocessing pat uh, uh announcement this is truly defining not only for microsaic but point of care clinical technology as a whole um, the clincher here is that we gain med a medical license in china which is a massive differentiator for us and also point of care uh, testing in, in general um, therapeutic drug mon monitoring which is what we'll be doing is is necessary because generally therapeutic drugs have got a, a very narrow therapeutic window you can either very easily take too little or too much of a drug and that's why you have to monitor uh, it's also needed because um, there's, there's a high degree of patient non-compliance i.e patients not taking uh, the medication and particularly if you can imagine um, uh, uh, medications for alzheimer's you can see that that's uh, that's that's certainly a, a potential and uh, it can also detect the effects of other drugs which might cause uh, interactions now microsex technology combines the power of uh, mass spectrometry um, with our mobile footprint it uh, open up, opens up an opportunity for us um, in, in what is about a 50 billion dollar market initial applications in china is in psychotropic drug monitoring and we'll be commercializing that in 2022 uh, but we're also going to be working on increasing the number of drug categories, for example, in cardiac drugs, antibiotics, anti-epileptics, and in immunosuppressants, but the list is long. Really, any category of drug with that therapeutic window is very narrow, and you have to monitor, preferably real-time, uh, the uh, therapeutic dose. And as well as the list of application areas, we're also going to be looking at extending into other geographic markets. So we're absolutely not reliant on just doing business in China. Another uh, announcement we made uh, again in May uh, is the collaboration with Swansea University. Um, now, this isn't just a sort of, you know, typical um, academic uh, collaboration. Actually, this is going to help and inform our commercial rollout of our water detection systems. The collaboration involves environment agencies and other industrial partners in the UK. It's going to involve lab analysis, real-time screening for remote samples, and also monitoring in established utilities companies. Its aim is to improve monitoring efficiency, and we'll be embedding our technology within uh, an artificial intelligence layer. 
Uh, data is something we talk about a lot, and th this is yet another example where our business model is changing absolutely for the better. But the final part is, for me, the most exciting in that our technology is going to be used to inform the link between uh, chemicals in the environment, particularly forever chemicals, to specific genetic changes in the human genome. So, you know, you're, you're going to get a very strong evidential link uh, between the uh, the cause and effect, the pollution and the illness in the in the human. So, um, in essence, we get industrial partners, advance our technology proposition to market and inform leading edge medical science. And uh, as I said before, absolutely, what's not to love about that? What's also nice is that the Swansea collaboration really nicely interleaves with our collaboration with EcoWater OS. And we joined that consortium uh, when we started collaboration with the Deep Verge group. And here the objectives are remote and multiple screening modes and smart water detection. So the two go very nicely hand in hand. And this is really just a pictorial representation on slide nine. Um, a picture paints a thousand words. You know, on the left, this is the traditional approach to water monitoring, a centralized lab, very big, very uh, expensive equipment. And on the right is how we go about that in Microsaic. You can see there our kit very comfortably in the back of a car. And we're taking uh, essentially what you have on the left hand side of that picture to the point of need. And that's why we often say point of need uh, technology. Market sizing, that's a, that's a tough one to, to nail. But you can see there that, um, you know, some indicative figures below are are certainly sizable and even if we ins installed a small number say in leading water treatment centers let alone through the ecosystem we're looking at a very very uh, substantial install base and uh, naturally with our partners at modern water who are already talking to water authorities utilities companies we've got a very good line of sight and uh, before our, our dealings with deep verge we just didn't have this unique channel advantage OK, so um, I'm going to wrap up on a final slide. I'm, I am absolutely stoked with what's coming down the pipeline. Um, we've had a, a, a good uh, first half. Uh, I expect significantly more in H2. We've got a very strong pipeline that's building. And our turnaround that we spoke about earlier in the year is actually translating into sales now. And we're going to be adding more of those in H2. It's translating into contracts, uh, commercial contracts which will augment those sales even further. And we are going to be commercializing new products to fuel both those commercial contracts and, of course, sales. Um, I'm happy that we've beaten where we thought we'd be uh, at the, the end of uh, half one in 2019. And I'm absolutely confident we can, uh, we can deliver in H2. And with that, I'll hand back. Fantastic. And thank you very much indeed. Thank you for the presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, do please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right hand corner of your screen. But just while Glenn and Bevan take a few moments to review those investor questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you that recording the presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard on the Investor Meet Company platform. I'd also like to remind you that your feedback is important to the company and immediately after the presentation has ended you'll be redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. Um, Glenn Bevan perhaps we could start off the Q&A session we did have uh, a number of pre-submitted questions and perhaps I can just start by reading the first one. Um, the first one reads as follows you've had a trail of good news recently showing a lot of traction since January do you think this is adequately reflected in the share price? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm not surprised that question's come up. I mean, look, look at the news flow we've put out there. We're the first to market, first in the world with 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 an amazing way of, of getting biologics to market faster. Uh, we're about to get a medical license in China uh, and sell our product into into hospitals, of which there's 33,000 in, in China alone. Um, you know, it, it's it's our, our news flow is just it's just kind of month after month of really positive news. You know, absolutely, we we are seeing churn in in the in the share price. Uh, pretty much all of it is short term uh, short term churn. Um, there's there's very little institutional churn. I I, I can say uh, so. Um, you know, uh, 
I, I think what we have to do is focus on the fundamentals of the business, which we are doing. With, there's going to be more news coming out. Um, you know, this is a company that's had 30 million already invested in it. Uh, we've got a fantastic channel now ahead of us. We're bringing new products to market. You know, if you ask the CEO of any business, is their business uh, undervalued? They're, they're likely going to say, yeah, of course they are. But, you know, 0.25 of a P for this technology and this opportunity for me is is extremely undervalued. And hopefully shoot, soon that share price will will pop because the, the real value of this company is going to be seen. That's great. Thank you very much indeed, Glenn. Next one we've got here is, do you have forecast out in the market yet? No, we don't. Um, we we're going to be reviewing that in in the autumn. Um, uh, really, off the back of last year, um, you know, we 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 thought it it perhaps would be prudent not to. But you know, we've had a, a great half one. Uh, we're absolutely confident of a great half two. So yeah, we'll review that pretty shortly next few months. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, next question reads as follows. Typically with mobile screening, um, there's a reduction in performance. How does your technology compare on that basis? That, that's a real simple one to answer. I mean, we, we've got data that shows you've got absolute parity with, with kit that is 10 times the price and four to five times the size. But it, it's not it's not just about the size for size sake. You know, it, it's about the use point of our detection. You're essentially getting, you know, very high end lab spec information in areas that you wouldn't normally get it. And that's why we're giving these releases. We're, we're sending out these RNSs. You know, we're in PAT detection, uh, real time PAT detection where we're on the, the factory floor, uh, allowing uh, people developing these biologics to make decisions immediately. We're moving our detection into hospitals. Right. So, you know, it, it's it's the first time this power of detection has been you know essentially been put into the hand of of real frontline end user um, operatives. Thank you very much indeed. And the final one we have here is why do you think Microsoft has been under the radar? You know, Microsoft, as I said earlier on, it's it's had it's had a, a lot of money invested into the technology, and and really since uh, Jerry and the new boards come on, um, you know, we've we've put a lot of effort into redefining the business model, and that means uh, really being a lot more relevant to to the end user, uh, solving real world problems. Uh, you know, it's not enough just to sort of put data on paper. You, you've got to you've got to go out there and solve a problem, whether that is pollutants in in a in a water course. You know, whether you you uh, go to a medic and say, "Well, look, we can we can detect uh, drugs real time in a patient," and and that makes a phenomenal difference. And that's why, as I mentioned earlier on, I think in the next half, you know, you're going to see that profile of the company uh, just just climb exponentially. Fantastic. That's great. Look, thank you very much indeed there, Glenn. Um, Glenn Ben, we have had a number of questions submitted during the meeting itself. So perhaps if I could just ask you just to click on that Q&A tab and just uh, have a little scan down there and see if there's anything that we haven't already covered off um, and uh, just give your response where appropriate. That'd be great. Yep, sure. So Rizna, um, do we have a medical license in the UK? No, not yet. Uh, but as I say, you know, absolutely, we're, we're, um, we're working on, on expanding our, our medical presence uh into other geographies it's a good question Riza. um are all your developments fully protected by patents yeah absolutely we've got over 70 patents and we're adding uh, typically they were based more on the the technology itself but you know our business model is is increasingly more about the data and the software so we're, we're bringing out patents around that as well uh, that was from peter j um can you can I explain the cancer opportunity a little further? I will. I promise. <laughs> it's uh, Simon C. Yeah, uh, uh, so it's a really, really, very uh, fascinating, exciting area for us. So uh, once once my uh, once my nomad won't kill me, I'll let you know. But but very exciting area. It's really the fact again that we can detect small and large molecules in situ, and that's the key. It's in situ. Um, Giles W, you're working on lots of interesting, exciting opportunities that could transform the business. Presumably none of them are slam dunks. Uh, do I have any issues that prevent the business from accelerating rapidly? No. 
And the reason is, is that, um, you know, if you take two examples, Deep Verge is one. Um, so they're already very well embedded in the water industry. If you follow their their news flow, um, you know, you can see they're very active uh, in all ter uh, geographies, including China. Um, and they've got, you know, fantastic links with the uh, water industry. And that that enables Microsaic to sort of slot into in, into water. What would have may maybe taken us months or years, you know, it, it is significantly reduced that barrier to entry. Uh, in terms of healthcare, um, as I said earlier on, you know, we've got one uh, of start of many, you know, we've got a um, an agreement with a, a company in China to get our, our product in as a medical device. You know, we'll get that done this year and, and then we're into the Chinese market uh, we've be, we've got an approved um, uh, product for sale in China, and you know that's massively reduced the barrier to entry there. So, you know, I agree with you. There's tons of opportunities, uh, but actually, the barriers to entry for us are, you know, relatively uh, relatively believable, uh, very believable, should I say, but relatively doable in a short short amount of time. I'm just reading the questions here. Uh, yeah, there's a question on helium. I, there was a TR1 recently. Helium did sell down a little. Um, I would say, though, that uh, in in comparison to to general churn, that that was relatively insignificant. Um, but I I don't I don't know uh, I you know as to who sells what when. Obviously, I I don't know. That, that's uh, unfortunately par par for the course. Um, well, they, Sorry, they, are, they are very supportive. Uh, all our institutions are very supportive, should I say. I think there's a couple of questions on the share price, which I think Glenn addressed. One is what the share price will be in July 2022. Um, clearly, you know, we don't have a crystal ball. All we can do is what we're doing is uh, bring the good news out, uh, continue with um, pushing commercial operations and uh, we hope eventually the share price will reflect that. I think that's all the questions. I think uh, indeed you have pretty much, yep, you have, you've covered them all off. Look, thank you very much indeed. And thank you for the investors, of course, for submitting those questions. Any further questions that do come through, um, the team will obviously have the opportunity to review them and we'll publish uh, the answers to those submitted today on the platform. Glenn, perhaps before I redirect investors to give you some feedback, I could just get a few final words from you, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for, for joining us again. Uh, these These are really well attended for us. Uh, so thank you very much for listening and thanks for your questions. You know, Half One has been a, a, a fantastic turnaround for the company. Um, you know, ha Half Two is really, really exciting uh, in terms of the commercial deals we've already got in place, those that we're putting in place, uh, and also the new innovations on their way. Uh, you know, we are a fantastic piece of technology, plus AI, plus Internet of Things, you know, you're looking at a company that uh, has got some of the most exciting, exciting technology in its space on the stock exchange. So uh, watch this space. Fantastic. That's a, a great way to end. Glenn Bevan, thank you indeed for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close the session as you'll be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and is greatly valued by the company. So on behalf of the management team of Microsoft Systems PLC, we'd like to thank you very much for attending today's presentation. That concludes today's session. Thank you.